Hi, I would like to welcome you to here onto our online version of Robotic Prostatectomy Surgical School. I am Lisa, I'm one of the Senior Urology Nurse Specialists and I'll be joined by Amy, another urology nurse, and Caitlin who's one of our physio team. You may be wondering why you've been invited here today. The reason why you're watching this is now because you've chosen Robotic Assisted Laparoscopic Surgery, otherwise known as RALF, as your treatment management plan for your prostate cancer. The aims today are to increase your knowledge, your expectations and therefore aiding a quicker recovery. If you have any questions, please contact your CNS. You should have a number already, but we'll give this a little later on. Um, and it will also give you an opportunity to ask questions and no question is a silly question. So, let's meet the team. We are all part of a multidisciplinary team this is our team of surgeons. You will have met or spoken to one of them during your treatment journey. These are the anaesthetists who will be involved in um, anaesthetising you on the morning of your surgery. We also have a wonderful bunch of clinical nurse specialists. Our urology CNS team, which has expanded over the last 18 months. We have Helen, who is our lead nurse. Senior nurses comprise of myself, Penny, Jackie, Sharon, and our fabulous Amy and Laura, who joined us earlier on this year. Other members of the teams will include ward staff, physios, our fabulous urology intervention team, but behind the scenes there are many more that make your journey possible. We all have different jobs to do, so we all run like a well-oiled machine, all centred around you and your journey. So before surgery, what you can expect? You need to prepare yourself before your surgical journey. So pre-op assessment, which everybody needs prior to surgery, you'll be assessed for blood pressure, Blood's taken, ECG, you might have swabs from RSA or COVID if it's needed. We'll also discuss any issues with prior any, any, with prior any anaesthetics that you've had. And to ensure that you've signed your consent form, you understand what surgery you're having. Obviously, this will have been discussed with your consultant at the time of your treatment decision. We also need to optimise your diet, which will enhance recovery, which will be discussed shortly. We'll also have an assessment of your lower urinary tracts, erectile dysfunction, and the reason to this is so we can have a benchmark of your symptoms as these potentially will be impacted post-surgery. So this will lead nicely to pelvic floor exercises which will both um, aid your bladder and erectile function post-op. So at this point I'll take this opportunity to welcome Caitlin to discuss this further. Hello, my name is Caitlin O'Malley. Jennifer Wesley and I are the pelvic health physiotherapy team leads for Worcester Acute Hospital. I'm here to talk to you about your pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is a group of muscles that support your bladder, bowel and have a role in sexual function. Urology surgery can disrupt your pelvic floor and following surgery it's common to experience problems with your bladder like leaking when you cough or laugh, not making it to the toilet in time. This is why it is important you know how to do your pelvic floor exercises so you can optimise your strength before and after surgery. Let's talk about how to do a pelvic floor squeeze. Tighten your back passage as if you're trying to stop yourself passing wind and then as if you're trying to stop yourself passing urine. You might feel a little bit of a lift. You can check if you're doing these correctly by placing a finger on your back passage, clothed or otherwise, and you should feel it tighten and lift around the area. Or you can stand and imagine as you squeeze the pelvic floor that you're trying to lift your scrotum upwards. You could try this standing in front of a mirror undressed and aim to see if you can see a slight lift of the scrotum. You should aim to do 10 slow holds, aiming for up to 10 seconds, but just start with whatever you can manage. Follow this with 10 quick squeezes. You should aim to do this at least three times a day in any position. Try and get into a routine of doing your exercises regularly or download the Squeezy Men NHS app to help you remember. You can start these pre-operatively and then you should start them post-operatively once the catheter is out, which will be around two weeks. You should aim to do these consistently for three to six months or longer if you feel your symptoms haven't improved. 
If you're struggling with any elements of this, please ask your healthcare professional for a referral to the Pelvic Health Physiotherapy team. We work across all three sites at Worcester Acute Hospital and we'd be happy to support you with your recovery journey. Let's talk about returning to your normal activities following surgery. You should wait at least two weeks before returning to driving. This is because you won't be able to do emergency stop and you'll still have a catheter in. High impact exercises, including cycling, you need to wait at least six to eight weeks to do. This is because of the pressure down below. For lifting, you should wait at least six weeks before you start anything strenuous. And your work depends on what you would usually do. Your consultant or GP will be able to advise you about returning to work and write your sick note. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm one of the urology specialist nurses and I'm going to tell you about pre and post-op information to best prepare your body. Enhanced Recovery Programme is evidence-based best practice into surgery to optimise patient recovery post-op, especially in complex surgical procedures. This has been proven to show patients' hospital stay has been significantly reduced. Keeping a low residue diet for two days pre-op will enhance recovery, minimising faecal bulk to prevent constipation, enabling less strain on the abdomen post-operatively. The carbohydrates will convert into sugar and therefore storing them whilst not eating so the body reconverts it, therefore releasing energy. It is recommended only one energy drink before surgery and ideally no caffeine. For diabetic patients, no energy drinks. Postoperatively, increased intake of protein is encouraged as this helps repair cells for the body. Diet preoperatively. Try a high carbohydrate diet. This can include a high energy drink, which would not be advisable for diabetic patients. Postoperative, it's recommended foods with a high vitamin count, including fresh fruit and green veg, like spinach, kale, cabbage. Also a high protein diet like fish and seafood, dairy products, Greek yogurt, cheese and milk, lean meats, including chicken, pulses and soya products. Forward plan for when you get home. Plan how you are going to get to and from the hospital. Ensure you are prepared with shopping or pre-prepared meals before you have your surgery. Is someone going to be at home with you? Or consider friends or family to check in on you? Or do you have any pets that will require alternative care arrangements? Think about where you live. Is it an apartment on upper floors with steps or lifts? You'll require comfy clothes to travel home with, no jeans. You may be choose to place a small pillow underneath your seatbelt over the wounds. Bring something to read. If you require your phone, please bring a charger. You'll have signed your consent form. Please bring it with you signed and dated. So welcome back. We'll now talk about the robot itself. The Da Vinci robot comes in three pieces. The surgeon sits at the console where he operates the robot, so he'll be looking into this. The ports are then placed into your abdomen by the registrar supporting the surgeon on that day. There is a separate stack system, which is 2D um, to watch visually, which is operated by the registrar. It's a small, narrow space that we are operating in, so we all need the best help we can get. And this is by positioning you. Your legs will be put into stirrups, so your feet will be up here and your head will be down here. So one of the good things about robotic surgery is how well we can see. The surgeon feels like he's inside your body. It's that precise. The camera is, is special. It has a right eye and a left eye, a bit like we do. The brain converts the image to a 3D image. The robot is attached to you. This is called docking. The largest port will be near the belly button. And this is the hole where the prostate is removed. The whole process takes time. You'll be away from the ward for about five to six hours so we can let your relatives know the expectation of time it will take. The largest port will be the one that we remove the prostate from. To visualise all that information, let's watch a short video of the surgery. 
You have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Your doctor has recommended you to undergo a robot-assisted radical prostatectomy, or simply RARP. A radical prostatectomy is a surgical procedure where all of your prostate is removed. This animation shows how the procedure is done. RARP is carried out under general anesthesia. During a general anesthetic, medications are used to send you to sleep, so you are unaware of the surgery. When you are fully sedated, small cuts are made in your belly. Surgical tools and a camera are inserted through these cuts. The surgical tools are attached to the arms of a robot. These arms are controlled by the surgeon with a console which is placed next to the operating table. The surgeon detaches the prostate from the surrounding tissue. The seminal vesicles, two small fluid-filled sacs next to your prostate that secrete fluid which partly composes the semen, are also detached. Sometimes the lymph nodes, commonly known as glands, are removed also. The surgeon will take care to cause as little damage as possible to the nerves and blood vessels surrounding the prostate. The prostate and seminal vesicles are removed from the body through one of the cuts in your belly. The bladder and urethra are now sutured together. Robot-assisted surgery provides a clear visualization of even the smallest parts in your body. A catheter is inserted in your bladder to help the stitched-up wound to heal. The catheter removes urine from your body. You will be wearing it for a period after you have left the hospital. It will remain in place by inflating the balloon at its tip. RARP is a major surgery from which your body needs to recover. You will suffer for a while from urinary incontinence, which in most cases is temporary. You may also suffer from erectile dysfunction after the surgery. Talk to your doctor about what can be done to overcome these complications. On the day of your surgery, you will arrive and be welcomed onto the ward. The surgical team and an anaesthetist will come and see you. You should have signed your consent. This will be checked. If you have not signed your consent form, it will need to be completed and may cause delays. So please read and provide informed consent. Let us know if you have any questions. You will be given a hospital gown and stockings to put on. Please bring your next of kin contact details. Generally, you will walk to theatre to be greeted in the anaesthetic room, where more safety checks will be completed. A cannula will be placed in the back of your hand and you will be given a spine anaesthetic before the anaesthetist puts you to sleep. At that point, you will be moved into theatre. Once in theatre, your abdomen will be shaved along with a patch on your thigh so the diathermy can be placed. Diathermy is used to seal blood vessels then you'll be positioned carefully for the surgery to begin. The recovery room. Once the operation is completed, you'll be taken into the recovery room to wake up. You will have attached a drip, also known as an IVI, an oxygen mask or nasal specs, monitoring for blood pressure and a pulse oximeter, catheter, drain and five surgical incision points which are your wounds. Pain relief may be offered if you are required, if in discomfort. And finally, you will have surgical stockings known as Floatron leggings to aid circulation. The ward. Eat and drink four hours post-operatively. Constipation is your enemy. Pain management. You will experience some wound and shoulder tip pain. Four to six hours post-op, you will be required to mobilise. This can be done by gently starting to walk. It's suggested the day after your surgery, you have a wash and get dressed in day clothes. You will be taught catheter care and self-injections to prevent blood clots. Plan and prepare to go home. You will usually go home between one to three days after surgery, depending on individual recovery. You will be given a supply of wound dressings, catheter bags, pain relief, laxatives and blood thinning injections along with a sharps box. 
What can I do now? Remember, even though you have small wounds, you have had major surgery. You need time to heal. Be kind to yourself. Take regular pain relief to enable you to gently exercise. Don't do anything too strenuous, but it is important to move around a little and often to aid circulation. You can shower with all of your tubes. We're going to discuss about catheter care now. For those of you who've never seen or had a catheter before, it's a tube that goes down your water pipe and into your bladder. This drains urine. This will be put in while you're asleep, but it is taken out while you're awake. Although this takes a few seconds to be removed and it is just a little bit uncomfortable, not painful. The reason why you need a catheter is because the join from the water pipe to the neck of the bladder after we've removed the prostate, as was shown in the video, this area, this join called the anastomosis needs to heal. It is held in your bladder by a balloon filled with water so it stays in and doesn't fall out when you stand up or move about. To remove the catheter, we deflate the balloon with a syringe and then gently pull it out. The catheter will be attached to a bag and strapped onto your leg. This is called a leg bag or a day bag. You can get this as a short tube version or a longer length version. When it gets full, you will need to empty it. So you empty this down the toilet by opening the tap. You can also attach it at night to something called a night bag, which will drain overnight. This bag can hold two liters. You do need to make sure that the tap is open from the day bag so it will allow, allow continuous drainage. In the morning, you make sure the tap is turned off on your leg bag before disconnecting the night bag. You can then drain the urine down the toilet and then throw it away as it will be a single use night bag. You will have enough products given to you via the ward for the duration of the time that your catheter is in. Whatever you do with your catheter, it is very important that you wash your hands before and after um, so we don't introduce any bacteria. There are a couple of reasons why you need a catheter. Like the video has shown where you've removed the prostate and this is stitched then to the water pipe and to the, the water pipe is stitched to the neck of the bladder. If urine is coming down that area where the sutures are, they're not going to heal. The other reason is that ordinarily your bladder will fill naturally and when we go for a pee, then the bladder empties. When you have a catheter, as soon as any urine drains down from your kidneys into your bladder, it drains through the holes in the side of the catheter, so it's a slow trickle rather than a big sudden gush. If your bladder was to feel like normal, it would again put pressure on the joint and then causing pressure on the stitches and causing then issues with healing. The final reason is because if you, we had just left your water pipe without any catheter in, it would just close up and then you wouldn't be unable to be here. So therefore the catheter keeps it open a bit like a stent until everything is healed well. So having a catheter is really important. At the moment your catheter will be left in for a minimum 14 days and some other, other hospitals this may vary. There are a few things to remember. You can shower with the catheter without needing to disconnect it. Just dry it off and make sure the back of the, the leg bag is dry before you pop it on the skin. You will get some mucus and crustiness at the end of the penis. This is a natural occurrence. Just wash with warm soapy water and wipe away from your body so any bugs are cleaned away from you and not introduced further up into the water pipe. Blockage is unlikely to happen, but we need to warn you about it. If you think the catheter is blocked and it's not draining, first of all, check that the tube isn't kinked. Drink more water, walk around a little bit as it may be positional. If your bladder is feeling full and you're feeling really uncomfortable, you need to contact the urology team um, or the CNS. This is vital. You need to attend A&E &E at the Alex. Do not let anybody flush your catheter or attempt to change it because there is risk of, of damaging that anastomosis, that join. Alternatively, if you feel unwell, you have a high temperature, your urine is very cloudy and offensive, it may be you have an, an, an infection, you may require antibiotics, you can contact your GP for this. Okay. So you'll get an appointment to come in for a trial without catheter, and this is otherwise called as TWOC. 
In some areas, you may read that there is a trial, uh, there is a trial where catheters are being removed earlier, or even that patients are being taught to self-remove their catheters via video link. This is not available here at this trust. If your surgery has been tricky, or your, and your surgeon may decide you need a cystogram, which is just a posh x-ray with dye in it to ensure the joint is healthy and there are no leaks prior to removing your catheter. In this case, your, the catheter will stay longer until that joint is, far, is properly healed. Okay. So the way we remove the catheter is you'll come into the unit and see one of the CNS team and we'll basically pop a syringe to the side of the catheter, deflate the balloon, which I showed you earlier, which was keeping the catheter in situ, we, take, we deflate the balloon so then it becomes flat on, on the catheter itself. We then gently remove it. So this will be a little bit uncomfortable, but it won't be painful. Once removed, this is the time you need to start practicing your pelvic floor exercises. It's a two-way street. You need to do your part too for the best results. This will be supported by the Squeezy app that Caitlin's shown you earlier, just to reinforce the information. We'll ask you to go off and do two wees, come back for a splatter scan, and then we can assess the amount of leaking that you may have. We won't know until the catheter is removed. You are likely to require pads. There are specific pads made for men, and they look like this. But you will need fitted underwear rather than loose boxer shorts to give you some support and to capture any leakage so the pad doesn't slip. You'll also, also have some in your um, Prostate Cancer UK support pack, um, but depending on how much you are leaking will depend on how many pads that you will need. Some men recover their, con their contents within a few weeks, some men take a bit longer. For these men who are really struggling with a lot of leakage, we can refer you to Caitlin and the team for supervised pelvic floors. It's also important that you drink plenty of liquid, a bit more than you would do normally. You will also get a call from one of our CNS team approximately a week post-op just to see how you're getting on. So if you have any concerns or, or issues, there's your chance then to speak with one of the CNSs. Alternatively, you can please give us a call. We'd rather refer you to our um, physio team earlier than later. So if you're really struggling with leakage, please let us know. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Okay, so now we'll talk about sexual rehabilitation. As previously mentioned, um, your surgeon will always attempt to do nerve sparing surgery. The video has shown when the prostate is removed, the nerves for the erections are wrapped around the prostate, prostate like, a, like a cobweb or a network. If we can save them, we will, but this depends on the extent of your tumour and whether it's creeping through the skin of the capsule. Sometimes the nerves are not able to be saved. Our main goal is to cure you of your cancer. Even if you have had nerve sparing surgery, don't expect things to work straight away because nerves like, don't like to be touched. They don't like movement or electricity. And unfortunately during the surgery, we are using both. It will get better as time goes on and it's a very individual journey. Some men may recover quicker than others. Hence, this is why we assess you preoperatively with regards to your erectile function. Some men it won't bother, but some men it really will. However, it isn't all doom and gloom, and there are things that we can do to help. First line management is tablets. Sildenafil, which is generic for Viagra. Tadadlafil, which is generic for Cialis, or Levitra. We will ask the GPs to prescribe you these on a regular basis. This is to encourage the blood flow to that area. After the surgery, you will not have the normal ebb and flow that you would do naturally because the erections aren't there and we have disturbed everything. So it's unlikely you will have the nocturnal erections you've previously had immediately. Normally you may have nine or 10 that you don't even know about. This keeps the tissues healthy. The tablets will help on a cellular level. It might not do anything that you physically notice. However, on a non-visible level, level, it will just help the tissues engorge with blood flow. The other option, so the next line management, is physio for your penis. This comes in the light of the pump, and I would recommend this to every patient, because it encourages blood flow directly to the penis. It can also, you, you can also use it for intercourse if you, if you so choose, along with the tension rings. 
but we, we, which we will demonstrate later. But the main reason is just to make sure you keep your length. Some men may notice some penile shortening due to the amount of water pipe that's removed depending on how long your prostate is, and then they find they have extra foreskin. Then before, due to everything being pulled back to join up the water pipe into the bladder. Alternatively, the other options for treatment are MUSE, which is the urethral pellet that we teach you to insert into your water pipe, or injections that you self inject directly into the side of the penis. If there has been no improvement at all and you have tried other options, although it can take anything up to two to four years for erectile recovery, you may be considered for an internal prosthesis, which is an implant. This is again major surgery. We would need to refer you to a specialist hospital for this. This is not something we offer here locally. So the point of this information is that let's cure the cancer and then we can try and improve everything else. Also for extra reading, prostate cancer and your sex life um, can be retrieved from the Prostate Cancer UK website. Now we'll discuss your general follow-up. So normally you will get a phone call from one of the CNS team to ensure all is well a week after surgery to make sure that you've got no burning issues and everything is running as it should do. Then you'll get a general outpatient appointment with a consultant six to eight weeks after uh, at your local hospital. So that will either be Worcester Royal, Alexandra Hospital or Kidderminster. This will be dependent on where you live we try and get you to the local localist hospital for you. This may be in the form of face-to-face -face or a telephone, a telephone consultation. If you would prefer a face-to-face, -face, then please let us know when we will arrange this. So at that appointment, we will ask you to have a PSA prior to coming so we can see what your post-op PSA is. We'll also assess your continence and your erectile function. We would also ask you to have three monthly PSAs via your GP, which is just the prostate blood test every three months. Why would we need to do that, you ask? You've removed my prostate. Well, it's important because you should not have any PSA in your system. The PSA is prostate specific. If you do start getting any PSA in the system, it would, may well suggest you may have recurrent disease. But if you have any concerns or any worries at any point in this journey, please contact your CNS. We also have support groups such as the Kidderminster and Worcestershire Prostate Cancer Support Group, which has been running now for many years. Um, you have the Prostate Cancer UK website um, and also the Macmillan Cancer Support Group. So please use the information, utilise the information and the contacts that are available to you. There is also a scheme called the Buddying Scheme where we can introduce you to men that have been through um, the same surgery and they can share their advice on their individual journey. This might help you with any concerning questions, but please remember, no question is a silly question, please ask it. So finally, the key messages to take away with you. Plan and prepare for surgery. You will get a date for your surgery, so plan around it. So nothing is left to the last minute. The injections, the blood thinners, you need to do this daily and the staff on the ward will teach you before you are discharged. If you are unable to do it, then we will teach your partner to do it for you. Catheter care, very important. Do not let anybody who is not urology ch attempt to change or flush this catheter. Constipation, what to do and what to expect. Remember, constipation is your enemy. Pelvic floor exercises, please do them. You need to take some ownership. This is your body and you need to do things to help yourself. We can only do so much. Also remember to keep active. You don't need to go to the gym. Just walk, move around, keep things moving. Keep drinking, it's also so good for you in so many ways. I hope you have found this useful and we wish you all the best for your next step in your journey.